let's go through this one right here. Yep. Yeah, so this one I slightly customized. So I've got my stage guitars. I custom put an Evertune in, which people can order my signature through Evertune directly. Oh, wow. Or they can have a, a local luthier install it if they buy my MK and then want to get an Evertune afterwards. My stuff at home, my stuff I use for the dress room, my stuff I use for home studio, I don't have Evertune. So it's really personal preference. My thing with them is you're locked to that tuning if you do it. Yeah. And we are locking ourselves to these tunings because this is, you know, I've got four guitars for my, for my touring rig. So my guitar, yes, it's incredible. It's, it's based off the original Les Paul Custom my dad got me when I was yeah. about 11, 12 years old. So I was obviously a very it's lucky a cool 11 story. year old. My kids are, when they hit 11, they're not getting a Les Paul Custom. Not, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get something else. Um, so they're going to get this. Yeah. Uh, which isn't bad. Yeah, so I was very fortunate. Uh, 11 is when I started picking up guitar, tried it for a pop punk band, didn't make it into the band. Then I got into metal, tried it for trivia, made it in trivia. First band, first job, still the same thing I've been doing for Rules. almost 23 years now, Damn. which is amazing. Um, so I sent my Gibson Les Paul custom, said, let's model this as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Like. I, I was like, I know it's apples to oranges a little bit with Gibson Epiphone, but make it play as close to this Gibson as humanly possible. Look, feel, smell, everything, sound within this budget. Because I yeah. know what I know what our fans can afford, and I, I always wanted to have a price point that makes sense for the metal and rock audience. Because yeah. that's what I would have been able to afford as a kid. You know, I, I see a lot of our fans are 12 to 16 to 18, and they're gonna save up for their own stuff, get a summer job to get a guitar. So I want to make it affordable, make it credible. And that was the original black and the snowfalls. We said we'd never do those again, so those were discontinued, completely sold out. The values are going up on the secondhand market, which yeah. is awesome. We said, let's let's figure out what this next range is. The next range, the MK Origins. The Origins, the idea was to go back to the look of the Les Pauls when people first ever saw me. When I was 18 years old, the Pull Harder video playing the black and gold Les Paul and the gunshot videos. I was actually playing a Les Paul Supreme that was a white and gold, but I was like, let's, for my OCD, let's make them all Les Paul Customs. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do the same back to the OCD thing, the same hardware in both colors. So that's why it's black pickups, black knobs, gold hardware across both. It's okay. not gold pickups on this, but it's black, so it's all similar. Um, we did go for a weight relief last time. I wanted as heavy as Les Paul Customs because I wanted it that heavy, but this time I said, let's go light, let's go ergonomic, let's try some different things. So I went back to this this new heel. What's cool yeah. about the, the new heel, it's back to the way the classic Gibsons feel, which I do love a lot, with a slight modern touch. I feel like before I went super modern with the cutaway, which was cool, and so people prefer that with my old model versus the new model, but I prefer the classic feel. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix between classic and modern here. Went with my MKH Custom Fishman's. That's one of the big changes I wanted to do because the last one was a different pickup brand. Yep. But now I've got my own um, Matt Hafey Custom Fishman's, which are amazing. They've got push pull, so you can actually make this thing sound like a single coil Strat, which is insane. Which is super um, versatile. Yes. So a pull up on the tone on either side goes from active to passive mode, which you know there'll be preferences for for both. And then this is where you get the split coil. So it just turns into a true split coil sound, which I do use live a little bit more now, which is awesome. So if you do the math, there's tons of configurations you could do split coil and humbucker, passive and active in the middle, et cetera. Um, the voicings real quick, are they the same as like the other moderns uh, in settings one and two? It's it's as cl it's super close to the Fishman modern, the, fl the fluences with that split coil. Okay. Because it, just like the Les Paul Custom, I felt like the Fishman fluences are perfect. And I was like, I don't want to mess with them too much because I love mm. the sound of where they're at. Let's just add something special. And that's the same thing I do with my guitar. Let's take something great and just add my slight customizations to okay. it. The seven string is a big switch up for Gibson and Epiphone because it's actually extended scale, which I didn't want to do last time because I opted to pick not to, but this time I want it for 25 and a 0.5 inch scale for the seven strings, mm -hmm. six or 24 and three quarters because I like the traditional feel. Yep. Didn't want to go to 24 frets because I feel like I never really used 24 frets. That's not really for me. So it's still 22, which I prefer. Um, we've got locking rover tuners, which don't necessarily mean it's, it's not locking the pitch in, but it locks it so you don't have to keep winding the string. Yep. What about uh, on neck profile? I know that's something that's kind of unique to your custom model. Yep. I swapped that around. It's as thin as possible. So let's make it as thin <laughs> as humanly possible. So before I wanted like a baseball bat. Yeah. So I, I will. I have a tendency of being very uh, juxtapositional with the way I like to do things. So it's, yeah. it's kind of the opposite in some of those things. Last guitar was heavy as hell. Feel like Les Paul <laughs> Custom, traditional as hell. This time it's looks traditional. Let's go very, very modern with the feel. Let's make it slightly weight relieved. Let's make the neck super fast and super thin extended scale. Um, the other stuff I've got on my rig, uh, obviously the strap. I love the strap. People are like, why dual straps? Or people try to make fun of it, but it crushes. It's amazing. Like I've always felt, why do you want 100% of all the weight of a guitar on your left shoulder? Mm. I've noticed even like my left shoulder's grown weird. I'm sure all guitar players look at stuff in the mirror, their left shoulder's going to be yeah. higher or lower than the right. Mine's higher, just overcompensating for the weight. Um, this is kind of like a 70-30 or maybe 60-40 split depending on where you do it. It's the signature Matt Hafey Richter dual strap. I love it. Even though the guitar's lighter, I still would rather wear this than a singular strap because it feels mm. better. My guitar does come with the 
the diamond straps, the strap pegs, which are really cool. So you can get put a strap on the guitar and start playing it right away. I still recommend putting locking tuners on there if you're going to play live, always. Um, so use Dunlops for that. The Hafey signature dual strap, uh, the Hafey Groove Gear fret wrap. Corey actually introduced me to the fret wraps. It just cleans up that little bit of extra noise if you're playing like breakdowns or something super heavy. Yeah. Like, so you're not hearing the strings the ringing wings, up here. Yep. So I've got signature of that. I always make, I always say I'm kind of like the pawn store kiss. Like there's so many things with my name on it, including this jacket and this hat. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, yeah. It's insert, you're like a walking NASCAR. Insert the Wayne's World scene with Gar Santa and they don't bow down to corporate sponsors. That's me. That's me. So yeah, so the, my signature pickups, my signature guitar, signature strap, signature uh, fret wraps, and then I also use the Jazz 3s, these are my signature Jazz 3s through Dunlop. Um, it says Key and Ichi, that's my middle name, like indefinable one. I took the max, excuse me, I took the max grip and applied it to the Jazz 3 because I felt like the grip makes yeah. it a lot better. We tried every thickness of the Jazz 3 because I've always ask. loved the Jazz 3s. And we wound up somewhere between the, the original and the carbon fiber. Okay. And they have like every range. I originally got into these because of John Petrucci. I saw you played the classic red ones without the grip. Yeah. Um, I added the grip, changed to gold. And it was in 2006 where Kirk Hammett was actually asking me about my pick. And I was like, oh, it's, I got the idea from John Petrucci, but this is what I use. And now his signature pick is also the Jazz 3, which he- <laughs> It's funny to me- like found that, that from me. Shredders cool. have gravitated to the smaller pick. Why do you think that you've enjoyed it? I feel like it's more articulate. Uh, it's, it's more precise for me. Although, you know, Corey would disagree. Like he plays the classics and he plays really well. And I cannot play those classics mm -hmm. like that. I feel like it really digs in um, a lot, a lot more staccato than, than that. And, than the standards. I also pick super hard and I feel like this accentuates that. Like naturally, like it's just like pretty loud acoustic the way I pick because I feel like that really plays through as a big part of the tone. People talk about gear so much, but a huge, probably one of the biggest things of tone is the hands of the yeah. player. If Corey and I just swapped everything, it would not sound like Corey right? me playing through his rig and he would not sound like me playing through my rig. And I think that's what's such an amazing thing about instruments.